there's a little bit of everything in this video because I'm detailing one of my scenes on my layout. This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. These videos would not be possible without them, and if you'd like to join the Patreon community, you can follow the link in the description below and join for as little as $1 a month. This is the scene that we're going to be detailing today. This is a cheap Outland Models building that you can find for as little as $7. I'll put a link to that in the description below, but it looks a little, little, little bland, so we're going to add some things to it, including this set of chain link fence from Woodland Scenics. These are really, really cool, and they look really, really great when you look at the detail on them. So the way that I do this is basically what I do first is I line up all of the different segments so that they match up properly the way they're supposed to go and it's pretty obvious the way they're supposed to go there are some sections that end with poles and some sections that are meant to be attached by poles so once I line that up and they have little stakes that go into your the ground essentially and you can take your little pin vise with a small drill bit and drill holes that line up while it's laying there and then you can plop them right in and glue them in place Now it's time to add some scenic accents. I'm going to be using this set from Woodland Scenics of some dock workers and some yard workers. It's actually a really detailed in scale set. It's got a forklift operator and it's also got a guy wheeling out a delivery as well as a couple of other figures and boxes and things like that. So it's gonna look really great and be one of the things that brings this whole scene alive. So the first thing that I do is I go ahead and do like a rough placement of kind of where I want everything. And then I also have a couple of these cheapo little trucks and this little DHL truck and I'm gonna put those all linked in the description below but we're gonna start off with the forklift and the first thing I need to do is insert the guy in there now I put a little super glue in there to hold him in place and then I need to put what he has on the load so I use a little bit more of that star bond super glue I'll link that in the description below and go ahead and place the pallet as well as the box that's going to go on there and I use the glue to glue those in place and then I'm able to glue that to where it's going to go. Now, some people wouldn't glue something like this. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I don't foresee me moving this anyway. This is just supposed to be a little thing that brings this whole scene alive. So I go ahead and glue the forklift in place, and then I can start gluing all sorts of other things in place. And I start with the figures, and I go ahead and place the figures. Using tweezers in this situation is going to be very easy. These figures are really tiny, so uh, using tweezers makes life a lot easier in placing this figure. This is going to be my DHL delivery every guy. I know his uniform probably doesn't match, but he has a little hand truck and I'm going to put a box on there and then have that going with him. He's rolling that back to the truck. So those are a couple things right there. And then I need to place the a couple of other figures right here. And then I can also place the trucks. Now I don't glue down the trucks because it's something that I can potentially move around uh, to different places on the layout. I am going to pretty much leave the DHL truck here, but I can always exchange it out with something else in the future. So that's what I'm going to do for this little area right here, but you're probably saying, Jimmy, you haven't done anything to the building itself yet, and that's why I clicked on this video. Well, let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, so here is our building. Now, these things are extremely simple to put together. You don't even need glue to do it. They're kind of reminiscent of those old snap type models. If those are still around, I don't even know if they are, but they have these little holes right here from where you put it together that are kind of obvious. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of that as well as the seams. And we're gonna use a little bit of model putty. This is what I'm using right here. I'll link it in the description below. And we're just going to go through and fill in all the holes and the seams and everything in there that's not a decorative uh, part of the mold that this was made in. We then take a paintbrush and we kind of smooth out the putty, making sure that it gets in all the little cracks and crevices. And then we're going to let the putty dry. Once it's dry, we can come back with a little file with some rough sandpaper on it. And we can go ahead and smooth out that putty so that it blends in once we paint it. And I'm going to be using spray paint for paint. I'm gonna paint this all one color. So I didn't really show that, but I'm using spray paint to paint it. 
So this is a pack of danger and warning signs from JL Innovative Designs. It's got a bunch of little signs, various warning signs that are great for a variety of industries. Now, a lot of them are for like explosives and chemicals and things, but there's also some trespassing and even some watch out for forklift ones. And I'm going to be using those for this model. It's got a ton and these are just straight up paper. So you just simply cut them out and glue them in place and they're really really great and they look really good and they add just that little something extra special to your layout and your scene that you're making because it kind of just adds a little bit more to the illusion of realism it's one of those little details that someone who's looking at your layout can spot and it's just a fun little thing to add i love adding little signs like this to my buildings now it's time to weather, and I use pastels to do my weathering. I know people use weathering powders, but I grind up my pastels on these little artist pads that are for sharpening their pencils. They're basically little sandpaper strips, and I will grind them up and then brush them in like so. You don't need any water or anything fancy, but they work really, really well. And I start off with usually a brown to add some grunge, and I'll do more on the bottom of the building than the top since that's closer to the dirt as well. So I'll just take this brush and it's almost like putting on makeup or something like that and you're just brushing it around the next thing i do is i come in with either a dark gray or a black and i put some streaks coming down from the windows it's kind of like when it rains and something runs from those windows that's what this is kind of mimicking and this is something that in my opinion can actually add a ton to your buildings if you add this this is one of the simplest things you can do to really make your buildings look weathered is to add these little streaks of runoff because it's something that you don't notice until you notice about a lot of buildings so adding these lot these little streaks just adds a ton to your building and really it's just really simple to do you see how quickly i'm doing them right here Next up, I kind of take a mesh of my dark gray, my brown, and my red pastels, and I use these to weather the roof. And one thing that I will do with weathering the roof is I will kind of jam some of the powder that I make into the corners. And what this does is basically, you, a lot of times you'll see like on buildings like this, if you're actually up on the roof, you'll see where it really like some of like the dirt and everything will start to collect in the various corners. So it's just a little something you can do to add a little bit of realism. And it's one of those things that just does another thing to trick the eye rather than just kind of spreading out everything there is with regards to the weathering. The next thing I'm going to do is add some little details on the roof. Now, one thing that I do with all my model kits, if I have little spare pieces that were included, especially if it's like a kit bash type kit, and I've got all these little pieces, whether it's the flashing or the tubes or anything like that, that come with the model kit, I tend to keep those because you never know what you're going to use. So I have from my um, Pike stuff kits that I have on my layout, I have a bunch of extra parts because they were kit bashing kits that were designed to be put together. So they came with a bunch of extra things so I grabbed a couple of those and let me preface this if there's any HVAC techs out there I am not trying to accurately model any sort of HVA system on this roof I'm just trying to get the look and feel so what I'm going to do is grab a couple of things it's actually a door two doors and a garage door some of the tubing from the piece um, and then some little gutters and then another little roof apex that's actually what these pieces are but I'm gonna cut them up sand them really nice and then I kind of place them and then I'll glue them together and then I will end up spray painting them with some silver spray paint and then just gluing them back in place and it actually does a pretty good representation of some sort of system on the roof of this building and it just gives you it's like yes there is a system on the roof of this building The last thing I did before putting this on the layout was to seal it in with some Mod Podge matte medium and just make sure that all the weathering was going to be nice and sealed. And then it's time to place it back on the layout.
And here is the final scene. It really looks great. I'm really happy with it. And to take this little cheap building and take all of these parts, put it around it, and to detail it up like this, to really make it feel like a living, breathing business rather than a simple backdrop building where trains go on my layout, is just something that I really enjoy. And I hope this video shows you that you don't have to do a ton of things and you don't have to be a master of these kind of things to come out with a good looking building like this and and have a good scene like this on your layout. If you're looking for more, check out these videos and playlists right here. That should get you going with some more stuff. And thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.